everybody, my name is Samuel Alexandro Silitonga and this is a video about my journey becoming an ISMA awardee following a student exchange program for one semester in the Netherlands. For those who don't know ISMA, ISMA is a scholarship from Indonesia that stands for Indonesian International Student Mobility Awards. Indonesian International Student Mobility Awards is the government of Indonesia scholarship scheme to fund Indonesian students on mobility programs at top universities overseas. Undergraduate students could spend up to one semester at overseas universities partners to study, experience host country culture, and do practical assignments to hone their skills. There's about 60 universities as of the 2021 ISMA scholarship selection, but the list is bound to change and more universities will be added. From those 60 universities, there are 13 universities that are top 100 QS rating, such as Nanyang Technological University, University of Pennsylvania, and University of Edinburgh. There are 25 universities that are top 100 to 300 QS rating, such as Pennsylvania State University, Boston University, and University of Twente. Then there are 22 universities that are top more than 300 QS rating, such as Harriet Watt University, University of Warsaw, and many others. Moving on to the bigger question, how do I become an ISMA awardee? I will explain to you my journey and some tips and tricks to become an ISMA awardee based on my experience. The selection of ISMA is actually pretty straightforward. Are you sure about to be that? qualified to pass the selection, there is only three main requirements. There is a minimum GPA score of 3.0, a good knowledge of the English language, preferably a TOEFL ITP score more than 550 or IELTS of more than 6.0, and you have to be within your 5th or 7th semester. Unfortunately, you won't be able to apply if you're still on your 3rd semester, but you will be able to apply for the next year and the next year after that. Now now, don't click away if you feel discouraged after hearing you need a TOEFL score of 550 or IELTS of 6.0. I used to have really bad English, but I learned as hard as I can to improve my English and you too can do the same. There is still time to make improvements and I believe that you can do it. So here are my tips and tricks if you want to become an ISMA awardee. There are three main points if you want to become an ISMA awardee, which are a good GPA, a good score of English, and experience, skills, achievements, organization. From those three, you need to be dominant in two out of three points as a minimum to be able to become an ISMA awardee. Okay. Here's the explanation. So the first one is a good GPA. For my survey, a good average score of GPA from students all over Indonesia to become an ISMA awardee is a GPA about 3.6 to above. Number two, a good TOEFL IELTS score. A good average TOEFL ITP score is 590 to above. And number three, experience, skills, organization, achievements, meaning you have at least have experience in an organization or have certain skills, whether it's hard skills or soft skills, and experience at work, achievements, and etc. Now it's time to click out of this video because you've become discouraged. I'm joking, I'm joking. Now, yes, those three points are an average to become an ISMA awardee, but I did say that you need to be dominant in two out of three points as a minimum to be able to become an ISMA awardee. Now, don't quote me on that, please. This is just based on my experience and I will tell you that now. Out of those three, which do you think I am not dominant in? Yup, you guessed correctly in the GPA department. I am a student in civil engineering in the State University of Medan and having a high GPA is not really a common thing within the engineering department. To be exact, I applied this ISMA program having a 3.24 GPA and yet I still succeeded. How? The other two points carry me which are good English and many experience. Now, I don't want to sound cocky, smug, or arrogant, but here I will list my experience in the video. Uh, 
Okay, now those are just for reference points because you could have a high GPA and high English score but not so many experience or you could have a high GPA and many experience but not really high English score. As for me, I have a high English score and many experience but only just decent GPA. What I'm saying is that it is possible. ISMA students are not perfect in all of those three points. I am not perfect. Even though I've listed all those achievements, those come from a struggle. I already have five C scores in my university and already have one E score, making me have to repeat one subject. Reaching those achievements, I struggled too. I tried many competitions in the past and failed a lot. I tried other scholarships in the past, about three, and failed, not going to name them. I'm the loser in my school, whether it's elementary, middle school, high school, or university. Becoming an ISMA awardee is not instant. The path of becoming successful is filled with shattered glass and bumpy roads. But you only reach the top when you don't give up. If you stop halfway up the mountain, you will never see the view. The point is, you are capable of your heart's desire and there is nothing impossible. So study like you mean it. All of that, you will have to pour in your essay and motivational letter, specify why you want to study in that country, that university, what association you are going to join, what events you are going to follow, specify your struggles in life and how did you overcome that issue, and specify why you should be picked. Why are you capable? And what do you have to offer within the host university or country and your home university or country? Now that you have reached the end of the tips and tricks, here are my journey studying in the Netherlands. On the 31st of August, I went on my flight from Medan to Jakarta, then departed to the Netherlands transiting on the United Arab Emirates at Abu Dhabi. On the 1st of September, I arrived at the Netherlands at Schiphol International Airport in Amsterdam. We immediately traveled by bus to the hotel we are staying in in Enschede at the ITC hotel. It's about two and a half hour ride from Amsterdam to Enschede. From the 1st of September to the 6th of September, we had to quarantine since it's the safety protocol and on the 5th day we had a PCR test. After our results are negative, we can go on ahead with our studies and normal life going outside. So the main course that we enroll are Geoinformation System and Earth Observation. It is 15 ECTS each translating to 10 credits each. And we study the course of Geoinformation System from September till the start of November. Then the course of Earth Observation starts from the end of November till the end of January. Geoinformation System, shortened to GIS, is a course that explains the topic of a system that has a conceptualized framework that provides the ability to capture and analyze spatial and geographic data. We only also study two times a day and it's only from Monday to Wednesday. So from 6th to 8th of September, we studied our first few lessons on the subject. Since we start at 10.45, I usually went on a morning walk, walking about 3 kilometers from 6 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Then on the 9th of September, we rented our bikes and I immediately biked off to Germany. Since Enschede is right near to the border of Germany, only a 8 kilometer ride. But I did go to the city of Grona, West Poland. It became 12 kilometers, or a 40 minute bike ride. I went to a park that has a statue or memorial of World War I. On the 10th of September, I biked to the main campus and watched the movie of Shang-Chi. The subtitles were in Dutch, however, so when they spoke Chinese, I couldn't understand because of the Dutch subtitles and not English subtitles. On the 11th of September, we had a barbecue party with the Indonesia Student Association. On the 12th, five of us went to church. On the 13th to 15th, 
we studied on campus and had our first assignment related to using LiDAR data to simulate development of elevation change in QGIS. On the 16th, I went to main campus. On the 17th, I invited my friends to bike to Germany to the city of Gronau, Westfalen, and we went on a different park. On the 18th, we went to Githorn and used a boat to traverse the canals. On the 19th, I met a professor from University of Twente that is also Indonesian and we discussed several topics. On the 20th to 22nd was class. 23rd, I solo bike to Lonekarmolen, a 5 km ride from Enskede, there is a windmill there. 24th, I had a PCR for my trip for the 25th. 25th, we went to Den Haag, went to Binnenhall, the government's office, ate Brugge Herring, which is a national delicacy, basically resemble a hot dog but with raw brine fish, ate at a popular Indonesian cuisine in Den Haag, went to Madurodam that has miniatures of the architecture in the Netherlands, and went to the beach, rode a Ferris wheel, see the sunset, and went home. On the 26th, we went to Groningen and went to the Forum Groningen building, which is a architectural masterpiece. Consisting of many floors, then went to Prisentin, which is a quaint garden. The 27th till 29th was class, and on the 30th, I invited my friends to bike to Loneker Molen yet again, and we bought pancake flour that was milled there. On the 1st of September, I finished my second assignment, which we simulate a strategic location to place a windmill, which considers on the fact of land use, population density, roads, and etc. The 2nd of September, we went to Maastricht, and from there, went on a bus ride to Falls, where there is a border where the Netherlands, Germany, Belgium meet, and we went to the point where all of the three countries touch. There is also a labyrinth that we went in and tried to traverse. On the 3rd of September, I finally went to Amsterdam. Although it was quite a rainy day, we went to an exhibition and after the rain stopped, we went to the canals of Amsterdam. I also went to Apple to see its architecture and went to the dam, which is a grand square dominated by the royal palace. 4th, 5th, and 6th was class explaining the final project and third assignment. In the evening, I also participated in an evening discussion from Concept T, which is a civil engineering association in the University of Twente. On the 7th, we biked to Oktrup, which is in Germany, passing Gronau is Poland and is basically a 24km bike ride, which takes about 1 hour and 40 minutes. In Oktrup, there was a designer outlet that sells stuff that are branded but I did not buy anything, was just there for the experience. On the 8th, I worked on my third assignment, which is a visualization of ranking of the Human Development Index across the world. On the 9th, we went to Rumond, which is a designer outlet in the Netherlands, and bought shoes for my brother. We also passed an outstanding cathedral, and I couldn't just pass it without taking a photo. On the 10th, we went to Groningen to the forum yet again to participate in a game on exhibition, which had retro games and modern games, and I learned a lot from the history and development of games. I also saw this creepy lady statue. 11, 12, 13 was class. We worked on the final project, which that we are trying to visualize a simulation of what if the Netherlands flooded in a certain area and calculate the hazard map and risk function. On the 13th, I also ice skated with my friends. On the 17th, I went to Utrecht with my friends, went to a cathedral and a museum. 18, 19, 20 was class. 21st was work on assignment and final project. 22nd, there was a mini theme park open in the park of Enschede. And on the 23rd, I went to Rotterdam, passed by many architectural masterpieces, went to an art museum, go to the Erasmus Bridge, had ramen, and celebrated Christmas early. <laughs> and that's all leading up to this video, which was shot in the 24th of September. As for the future, I plan to go to many other cities in the Netherlands, such as Eindhoven, Nijmegen, Huda, 
Zandam, Delft, and many others. I also plan to go to other European cities and countries, such as France, Spain, and Italy. I guess that's all for this video. Maybe if this video gets attention, I'll do a video about my more detailed life in the Netherlands. I'm officially Ismail Bias because it improved my life and gave me a new perspective. Be bold to go abroad! That's all for this video. Thank you guys for supporting me. See you around.